Hi everyone. Welcome to eCollar training. And what we're going to focus on are the applications and strategies when you're using an e-collar. So the topics we will cover include what are e-collars, the training applications for e-collars, strategies that you use in training when you're using an e-collar, and then we will talk about a few case studies uh, that I've been working with, dogs that I've been working with, and you'll see that each case, it varies because dogs are individual. So what are e-collars? They are electronic or shock collars. The E stands for electronic, okay? Most of the collars and all the collars that I work with have two separate modes. One is the vibration mode. And that actually feels like a cell phone. If you ever have your cell phone in your pocket, say you're at a meeting, you need to keep it on mute, and you happen to get a phone call during that meeting, and instead of the phone ringing, it'll start vibrating. And you all, I'm sure, have felt that feeling. It doesn't hurt, but it definitely gets your attention. And that's the whole idea about these collars, especially the vibration. You get their dog, your dog's attention. Remember, our training is based on focus. And so if you don't have your dog's focus, you can't train them. Okay, so the, especially the vibration mode, I use that for getting their attention. That is true, especially when I'm working with deaf dogs. I have to somehow get them to look at me. Look just like training your dogs look, that's how I start. I get the dogs to look right at me. So I have to use something to get a deaf dog to start looking around to look for me. And so that's why I use the vibration collar or the vibration mode in that case. It's my preferred mode. It is, I like to use it as a mode in which if the dog feels the vibration, that it probably means to come over to me, okay? Not always, but in some cases, and especially when I'm working with deaf dogs, that is true. Okay, the other mode that we use, and this is the one that's more complicated, is the stimulation mode. And this mode is often needed to treat or solve certain problems. And what I'm going to explain in a little bit is various case studies and you'll see that there's variation among the dogs. There is no real cookie cutter approach to dealing with e-collars. Okay, so applications for e-collars, I divide them up into on-leash skills and off-leash skills. As you know from my training that leash skills are the crowning jewel of dog training. Leash skills are what's going to get you out and about, walking the neighborhood, you know, going to soccer games, all that kind of stuff. It gives you guys freedom. However, your dog isn't always on the leash. And so you have off-leash skills. And, you know, sometimes you let your dog out and like a day like today where it's pouring rain and your dog just decides they don't want to come in. Wouldn't it be handy to have some tool to get your dog back in the house without you needing to go outside and get them, okay? So those are the off-leash skills that we're gonna talk about. So both on-leash and off-leash skills have applications uh, for e-collars. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the on-leash skills. Probably the most important on-leash skill I use an e-collar for is when dogs have leash reactivity or leash aggression. A lot of times people don't know if their dog is, you know, reactive or aggressive. And I do want to point out the asterisk that leash reactivity and leash aggression, they can be potentially dangerous or deadly. And I don't necessarily mean that the dog is going to, you know, intentionally injure or kill someone. However, a reactive jumping out of control dog 
can cause problems. It can cause someone to get off balance. They can fall to the ground. They can hit their head. So it wasn't the intention of the dog and it wasn't truly the result of the dog becoming reactive, but it just puts the person who's holding on to the other end of the leash in a situation that they can get injured. You know, they can get pulled to the ground, dragged down the floor, you know, dragged across the ground. So leash reactivity, leash aggression is the one thing that I use uh, for, I use e-collars to help solve those problems, okay? Then there are some more finesse problems that you may need to deal with. And these I don't consider uh, potentially dangerous or deadly. Um, so for instance, when we're working on leash skills, and I know we talked about this with some other dogs, but if they're constantly forging ahead, you know, and I'm not talking about running straight out ahead of you. We have other ways to deal with that, just with the leash. But there are some dogs that, you know, just get so excited and just can't, you know, control themselves. They get so excited. My dog Kylo is like this, actually. She gets so excited to go out on walks. So sometimes you have to give them a vibration and just tell them to settle down, back up, stay in. Okay. You can also do massage stuff, but I'm in this video, I'm just concentrating on the ways you can use an e-collar. Okay. Yes, there are other things that you can do in these cases, but these are just the applications that you can use for e-collars. Okay. So forging ahead, get them to come back in. Okay. The other thing is distraction training. So you can be walking down the street with your dog and there are no distractions and everything seems hunky-dory, life is great. And then all of a sudden you see squirrels, birds, they smell stuff, or cars are zipping by in the area that you're walking, okay? All of these can cause dogs to be distracted, okay? Usually you'll see their ears go up, especially if the birds, squirrels are up ahead of them. Okay. A lot of times dogs that are reactive to cars, they'll start bolting, you know, they'll really spook and get scared. However, there are some dogs who literally want to run after the cars. Okay. And that one in particular uh, is, I should have uh, highlighted that as potentially dangerous or deadly. If your dog is trying to go after cars, that is a potentially dangerous and for your dog a deadly situation. However, there are some dogs that just get spooked by cars too, okay? And then there are those smells that we have no idea what the animal is smelling. However, we don't want to stop at each uh, you know, fire hydrant or street sign or bush or brick wall where dogs have peed on and we don't want them to smell every single time or there are just things on the ground and one of the things you'll notice if you're walking on a sidewalk or a road it's a lot easier uh, dogs don't smell as many things as once you get onto the grass a lot of times you'll see a dog's head go straight down to the grass once you get onto a grassy area and they get into tracking mode okay I, I track dogs, I know how to do that and it's really fun. But when you're walking to point A, going from point A to point B, and you don't really have time to do a smelling walk, you don't want them to be smelling every single thing. So you can use the vibration. Sometimes you'll have to go up to the stimulation to tell them to leave it with the squirrels and the birds and the smells and the cars, okay? So in this case, I when there are distractions, when they're on leash, and it's really causing them to just kind of lose their mind a little bit, you say the word leave it, and at the same time, you can try using vibration. Just in general though, I want to uh, remind you that whenever you're working in a low distraction situation, the vibration tends to be all you need, it's sufficient. However, when you start getting 
distractions, squirrels, birds, smells, cars, people, dogs. That's where you're gonna start needing uh, probably more than a vibration, okay? Once distractions go up, so does the requirement of getting their minds back to you. All right, so those are the leash skills. I don't use e-collars very much for leash skills. As I've said before, you can have great leash skills and never require anything like that. It does take focus to have great leash skills. And if your dog still doesn't have that focus when they're on leash with distractions, then you might need to add something else to the training. All right, off leash skills, this is where e-collars can really come in handy. So for obedience skills, if your dog doesn't come, uh, it doesn't, when you're working on place and stay, and they just keep wanting to get off the place and stay. All right, so those are two areas that you can have really great results with come. And there are some, well, I'll talk about these later, but I'll give you some examples of where these come in really handy. Anxiety and destructive behavior. You have to be really careful with this particular category of anxiety. I specialize working with anxious dogs and that's because I've been doing it for a long time. And again, if there is something that does not have a cookie cutter solution, this is one of them. Every dog's anxiety is different. There are some you know, similar trends, but each and every dog is different. And so you have to be super careful. However, destructive behavior, this is something that you definitely need to stop with an e-collar. And it may involve having a camera situation where you're like a webcam, where you're watching what the dog is doing when you're not there because the dog might be totally fine when you're there. But the second you go out the door, they're gonna start freaking out, that separation anxiety. And so we're gonna talk about Lincoln in a little bit and you'll see that that may require some additional tools. Barking and whining. Dogs that are running out into the yard, running at fences, barking at people, barking at dogs, that can be solved with an e-collar, okay? Also just random barking and whining. You know, your dog whines a ton. Well, we can use an e-collar. You wanna start with the vibration first, but then possibly go to the stimulation. And we'll talk about a dog who has those kind of issues. Car issues. They can either be issues of the dog outside of the car and either wants to attack the car or get spooked of the car. And the ones that attack the dog, uh, I'm sorry, um, dogs that want to attack a car. That one definitely needs stimulation. And that one needs to be a one and done situation. It's incredibly scary. It's incredibly deadly. And the dogs that have a tendency to chase cars are the herding dogs, okay? The border collies, the cattle dogs, dogs like that have a tendency to want to chase cars. And then finally, aggression. And I'm talking about off-leash aggression. This is something that I personally don't like to deal with. I used to work with dogs that have aggression. The biggest dog I've ever worked with that has aggression is a 150 pound St. Bernard. He wanted to bite me the first two sessions that I was in the house and I had to sit up on a ledge. And I actually started working with him before we were working with e-collars and then we started working with e-collars with him. But aggression is something I do not like to do. But if there is a dog that is aggressive to another dog, I certainly would have an e-collar on that dog. You want to stop that behavior ASAP. So. In this list, there are a number of skills that require or may require an e-collar that if not handled, can be potentially dangerous or deadly, okay? 
or one when a dog doesn't come. You know, they could start chasing a deer and then the deer runs into the street and so does your dog. And I'm bringing up that example because I have a friend who lost her dog that way because it got hit by a car. So that's a potentially dangerous, deadly uh, behavior. Anxiety issues and destructive behavior are also potentially dangerous and deadly. Running after a car can definitely be a deadly situation. And that's one of the situations that I will crank that um, collar up because I don't ever want the dog to think about doing it again. And the same with aggression. I do want to go back that there are some other car issues that you can deal with that are not deadly, but very annoying. So you have your dog in the car and your dog barks at other dogs when they see them in the street or barks at people when they see them in the street or in the parking lot, wherever you are. If you have that collar on your dog, you can correct them easily. And sometimes all you need is a vibration. You don't need the stimulation. And I've had clients tell me once I explained how to do this, they they have told me that ever since I taught them that the dogs are totally fine in the car now. So it, you know, and when you're distracted in a car, that's potentially dangerous. So in that case, it can be a dangerous, deadly, potentially dangerous, deadly situation. So your e-collar can help you in those situations also. All right, so those are the on-leash skills that I went through and the off-leash skills. These are the different applications you can have for an e-collar. All right, so now let's start Let's talk about the, so now let's start, let's talk about the strategies using e-collars. And I just put these together, both on and off leash skills. You can follow these same strategies. Number one, always start without distractions. You wanna get a sense of how sensitive your dog is. And I explained the different sensitivity levels, micro versus mini e-collars with the vibration. Let me just clarify that there's only one sensitivity level on each of those collars pertaining to vibration. The mini collar has a stronger vibration than the micro e-collar. However, in each case, there's only one level of vibration, okay? I always start with vibration first, okay? However, when you get into situations that there are distractions, you're probably going to have to go into the stimulation level. And you need to, without distractions, probably get an idea of when your dog is sensitive. There are some dogs that are sensitive at level one out of 100. Whereas, and I'm talking about stimulation right now. So your stimulation dial goes from zero to 100 or high. Some dogs are sensitive to one. Whereas some dogs don't show any sensitivity until you get into the teens or the 20s, okay? It varies per dog. So you're just going to have to make sure you understand what your dog is like. Let me preface this with saying though, If you find yourself cranking up to like 30s, 40s, 50s, and the collar's not working, there are a couple things that you need to ask yourself. Number one, is my collar turned on? Is the dog's collar turned on? Number two, if it is turned on, is it fully charged? Okay. Number three, if it is on and it's fully charged, Is that collar fitted properly? It cannot be loose on their neck. And I do discuss this in the previous video, but again, if you find yourself, you know, your dog's not responding to this collar, ask yourself, is it turned on? Is it charged? Is it on properly? Okay, so, uh, and then, Ultimately, you want to wean your dog off these collars. And I do it all the time. Again, every dog is different, so it may take longer for some dogs than the others, okay? They are individuals. There are some dogs that'll never go above 20 on an e-collar. 
the stimulation. And all they ever need is the vibration with a little bit of stimulation here and there. Some dogs who have a super strong prey drive may need it longer, but they still can wean away from that. Okay. If you have any questions, please contact us with all your dog training needs. Our book, The Dog's Perspective, will help you learn how to train from your dog's point of view. If you and your puppy dog want to train with us in person, we do that through Lucky Dog Training Asheville.